a body you have prepared for me. Have a look at this scripture, it's amazing. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. <coughs> read a little bit give it some context <laughs> for since the law has but a shadow of the good things to come instead of the true form of these realities it can never by the same sacrifices that are continually offered every year make perfect those who draw near otherwise would they not have ceased to be offered since the worshippers having once been cleansed, would no longer have any consciousness of sin. Yeah, that's something to contemplate. You know when you get into worship, one of the things that should disappear is any consciousness of sin. You, the peace of God begins to flood your heart. Having once been cleansed, would no longer have any consciousness of sins, but in these sacrifices there is a reminder of sins every year, talking about the sacrificial system of the Old Testament. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Impossible. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired. They just point to the big one. That's all. But a body, a body, you have prepared for me. A body. It's the only answer. A body. You have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have take, you take no pleasure. There's nothing that you can do, folks, to impress God. Nothing. There's no, nothing you can do to work to get his favour. Nothing. There is one thing that the Father delights in, and it is the body that was prepared for the Lord Jesus Christ. And as long as we hide ourselves in him, he will love us forever. Amen. You have taken no pleasure in any of these things. Then I said, behold, I have come to do your will, O God. And it is written of me in the scroll of the book. And we were looking at this in Psalm 139. How David said that he was wonderfully and fearfully made. And that all that is revealed of him is contained within the scroll. And the scroll is curled up and it means to be entwined. And obviously we find today that DNA is a scroll full of information and instruction about everything that you are ever going to be, down to the colour of your eyes, the colour of your hair, the shape of your, uh, your forehead and your jaw, everything that you have, including your character, is curled right up inside of a scroll, inside of a cell that instructs the cell to make you according to the plan. And here, it says there is a scroll that is there to construct the Messiah from the very, very beginning. And it had to be that way because she is our representative. She is our mediator. And there is only one mediator between God and man, and that is the man, Christ Jesus. And we bore the image of the first Adam. We are men and women of dust because of the first Adam. But because of the last Adam, we bear the image of the man of heaven. And so it is absolutely essential that Jesus was born in the same way and manner that you and I were born. And that is that 23 chromosomes meet 23 chromosomes and they mingle together and produce one single cell. One cell. There was a time when the fullness of the Godhead was contained within one single cell in Mary's womb. You can fit thousands of cells on a pinhead. 
Darwin thought that the cell was just a blob. But we know today that the cell is so sophisticated, it is impossible to spontaneously generate from chemicals. Impossible. But Jesus came about through the intervention of God and Mary, God and man fully, God and fully man, the representative of man upon the cross. The last Adam, the man of heaven, the redeemer of all mankind, began life as one single cell. And inside of that cell, inside of that scroll, inside of that DNA, was the colour of his eyes, the colour of his hair, the shape of his teeth, the shape of his forehead, his jawbone, his very height. And not only that, but all the characteristics of God within one cell in Mary's womb. And within three days, within 24 hours, sorry, that one cell became two cells. You think that cells are just sitting there not doing a lot, but I am very, very busy. And so the DNA is undone like a zip and the amino acids are put in place. And then when they're in the right place to form a protein, they're taken off and they're shipped to a little factory which takes hold of this one dimensional linear uh, a, a string of information and it folds up this amino acid into a three dimensional protein which then fits with other three dimensional proteins which makes up the tiny little motors and, and, and things and factories and skin and teeth and everything that you see in you. And in our Lord there was a time when he was as vulnerable as you could possibly be. He was one cell for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. One cell. That's some holy cell. Mm -hmm. And within 24 hours, it divided into two cells. Mm -hmm. And within three days, it was 32 cells. <laughs> and of course, it goes exponentially. From 32 to 64 to 128 to 256 to 512 to 1024 to 2056 and on and on until after nine months. Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach was two trillion cells. Body you have prepared for me, just like any other body. But he was fully God. And he was fully man. The absolute representative of all of mankind. I think that's rather splendid myself. <laughs> Have a look at Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. <laughs> oh, now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, poor man. Before they came together she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And Mary tells Joseph, I've got some news. <laughs> oh dear me. God puts us in some funny situations, don't he? <laughs> He's got a sense of humour as well, hasn't he? <laughs> I'm pregnant. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's impossible, Mary. No. I'm telling you, I am pregnant. Well then, who is he? Well, his name is Yahweh. His name is God. Don't be ridiculous, Mary. I love you. 
I love you so much, I will find a way of sorting this out. If you've lost your marbles, I'll protect you. I'll look after you. We serve an amazing God. And you'll never work him out, you know. You'll never work him out. You'll never work out a plan for your life. I promise you, you won't. He's got all kinds of turns along the road. And as long as you're with him, every turn will be amazing. Amazing. This child was both fully God and fully man. Built, assembled within Mary's womb. Of selves replicating and replicating until you've got this perfect child born into this world. What does it say in Proverbs chapter 30 about the stupidest man that ever lived? He asked this question. He asks this question. Who has ascended into heaven? And who has descended? Tell me if you know. We don't know. We don't know how a cell came from chemicals in a hostile ocean that was completely alien to that cell. We have absolutely no idea. And yet these same people believe it. They believe it. They believe it as though it's fact. But they will not believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. Jesus came into this earth fully God and fully man. Turn to John chapter 3. 